Hey guys and welcome back to a new series where today we're basically going to be making my engine bay look as pretty as we possibly can. So we've got a bunch of parts in here from paint mods. Now obviously when you buy these parts you are more than welcome to buy them fully painted or hydro dipped or however you want. I've gone for a slightly different approach which is I'm going to paint it all myself. Now, there's two reasons for that. One, I want to learn how to paint stuff properly. And secondly, basically the cost of getting them painted, I want to see if it's worth you guys buying them brand new and painted straight away, or whether it's worth, you know, doing it yourself if you can save that extra bit of money. So for those more budget focused people, hopefully this will help you. Um, and it will just kind of show you that you can do it yourself. But anyway, so this is the fuse box cover. It's just a bit of plastic, that's all it is. Um, so what we're going to do is basically just put a slight key into this, primer it, and then we're going to pick a colour. I'm starting to think going with the classic white and black theme for my engine bay will look wicked. Um, obviously I was planning on making all of these gloss black um, and then just having caps in a frozen white colour. But I feel like having a more white engine bay would actually be quite cool, especially if we're going down the route of maybe going to shows and meeting some of you guys at some point. So um, we're going to try that, I think. So we're going to make all the main covers frozen white, and we're going to have gloss black caps on top. So I think that should look pretty cool. But well, anyway, this is the you know fuse box cover. Comes with everything you need, just some sticky pads and stuff. Um, we've also bought. I'll just pop this over here. We've also bought the battery cover. So obviously when you buy from their website, you can buy in textured plastic, carbon, um, or this kind of raw plastic look. So this is the raw plastic look. As you can see, you know, it comes with quite a nice shine to it already. To be honest, you could pop these um, on your car if you really wanted to, and it wouldn't look that bad. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and make this completely gloss white. That's the plan. But we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Um, obviously, if it all goes wrong, it all goes wrong. Um, but I'm going to release this video no matter what. It's going to be a multiple part series, so um, prepare yourselves for that. So that's the battery cover. And then finally, we've got this one. Um, in all honesty, I can't remember what this one was. Now that I think about it, I think it might be the coolant cover so once again just comes with little sticky pads comes with a fitting guide which is very nice um, and then you there's your coolant cover cap probably sits on it that way so we're gonna paint that also nice and shiny white so that's everything that I bought other than I have here three caps um, so there's your cap, that's like a washer cap, um, that's your oil, I think, cap, I think it is, pretty sure it is, um, and then that might be like your coolant or something like that cap. So these are all going to be gloss black, um, and then we're going to paint the other things frozen white, and then if it all turns out okay, we'll then paint the actual engine cover uh, frozen white and gloss black. We may actually do it the other way around though. A lot of people go for the top of the engine cover being um, frozen white and then the bottom being gloss black. I may have a gloss black top with a little indent of frozen white. That way it kind of brings out the gloss a bit more uh, or the gloss black a bit more um, compared to kind of having it all frozen white. But anyway, let's start prepping some of these items. So the items I bought, um, these were just from B&Q. Um, I've just got some plastic primer. This will be for anything that I'm doing frozen white. So I'm going to primer it in white matte finish first and then obviously when I receive my frozen white paint which I bought I'll show you that in a future episode. Um, hopefully this will kind of make it all stick nice and bring it out cool. For the gloss black parts I'm going to be using what I used on the fog lights and everything. Uh, this is a straight onto the plastic paint. You don't need to primer it or anything like that. It just goes straight onto plastic. So it's super super cool stuff. Um, but this is just black gloss finish. Um, but we're going to really try and make a gloss finish with these on the caps. So we're going to wet sand them back. And for that I've just bought some of this stuff once again from B&Q. Um, just different grit things. This top one here which is I think it's the that'll be the 600 one I think at the front. Um, I can barely 
it, feel it when I'm putting my finger over it. Um, so that's like super, super fine. And as you can see on the back here, um, so basically it comes with medium, fine, super fine, and ultra fine. So that'll be your ultra fine finishing. And that's what we're going to use to basically uh, make it completely smooth and hopefully bring out as much gloss as we can in this after polishing it. Um, and then sealing it with some body shop lacquer. So hopefully this will make it last kind of under the engine bay. Once again, we'll see if it all goes wrong, we'll just sand it all back and go again. So what we're gonna do first is the fuse box cover. The reason for that, um, it's the least intricate shape. Um, so it hasn't got many corners and stuff. It's a nice flat surface on top. Um, and obviously it's the smallest bit of plastic um, for us to try, to try this on and see how it goes. Obviously then we got a battery cover, which is slightly bigger. And we got the coolant, which has holes and blah, blah, blah. Um, so we're going to try this first. I've got a small little sanding block from um, Halfords, I think you can buy these from, but any kind of abrasion pad will be fine. And basically what I'm just going to do is already a super smooth finish on this. I'm just going to basically key in somewhere for this plastic primer to sit. So I'm just going to take pretty much the smoothest side I can and just see how this goes. Now I'm not, I don't have a clue you know how people do this um i'm just i'm on a discovery mission basically to see what happens and how to do it so as you can see i'm kind of just scraped so it's less shiny now um hopefully you can see that and it's just starting to get a bit of a key into it and this will just make basically the primer stick to it just that little bit more i'm not going over it i'm not pushing hard anything like that I'm just going over it nice and gently. So obviously for these corner bits, I'm just gonna use the side of it. Um, basically, so basically I'm just gonna work around this whole thing and then I'll get back to you. So we're just going to get a microfiber towel and basically just get all of the dirt off now, or the dust that's been created from uh, sanding. Obviously we need this completely clean before we put the primer on. And there we have it. So that's our prepared surface. Um, obviously it's not as smooth as it once was um, but basically I've just keyed in just a slight scoring marks into it um, and now we're going to try the plastic primer so let's head outside obviously we need to shake this for about two or three minutes first hand um, and then we're just going to primer it up and see how it goes okay so what I've created just before I do primer it um, is just this little box basically it's the box that it came in um, I've just taped the ends, basically I'm just going to sit that over the top of it so no dust gets on it. So that way it can dry underneath um, without any dust kind of sitting into the primer. So basically this is where I'm going to be painting. Um, so just white primer over the whole thing, two or three coats probably. Um, and then I'll just let it completely dry um, underneath that box. Once again that's the stuff I'm using. Um, and just a note. I have no idea what I'm doing. We're just gonna try and do it. Right, so we're gonna let that dry for about, what does it say on the can? 
uh, several light coats a few minutes apart. So we're just gonna let that dry for like a few minutes um, and then come back to it and do it again. But as you can see, I'll just give you a close up. That's the current coat coatage. Coatage? Why not? The coverage. Um, that's the current coverage of this. Obviously we've got a bit here that we missed, but we'll go over it all again about two or three times. Just to show you guys where we're at, probably about two or three hours drying now. Um, there is only a tiny few little imperfections. There's like one here, but otherwise the rest of it is pretty good for like first time standards. So um, I'm probably gonna wet sand it after, this is probably after about three or four coats of primer. I'm gonna wet sand it, see how it goes. And like I said, I'm gonna experiment on this cover first, completely finish this cover and then I'm gonna do the others. So that's why it's gonna be a multiple part series because we're gonna experiment with this one first and see if it works. So it's had one night of drying now. This is how it's come out. So there's that one imperfection there, but otherwise the edge down the bottom's a bit kind of too thick, probably how I sprayed it here, so I need to kind of suspend it. So I'm gonna wet and dry all of this um, and then put probably one or two more coats on here just to finish it off um, and then we're on to the main spraying it's just really gently going over it just to kind of make it nice and smooth to be honest the top is now perfect I'm just going to do the sides 